Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the hierarchy view in Synthize. And you see the hierarchy view over here, where you see the tracker 100 is a child of camera 01. Trackers 121 through 123 are children of object 03. And we've got box 01 as a child of object 01. So the hierarchy view shows what goes with what. And in a geometric hierarchy situation, you can get a quite deeply nested situation. So this gives you a quick look at it, and it lets you control some other things as well. So just for starters, where do you find this view? There are a bunch of different layouts that include the hierarchy view now. So you can select one of these layouts that includes a hierarchy view at any point. If you have an existing layout, you can go and change one of the panes to be a hierarchy view as well. And for yet a different option, you can go and use the viewport layout manager and go and make new layouts that include the perspective and you know hierarchy views, whatever that you would like to use and whatever placement you'd like. Now, back here on the geometric hierarchy tracking room, you may notice that there's also a panel version of this as well. So this is just a small version for use with the geometric hierarchy stuff. And it just, it just makes life a little easier for you. I'll point out that it's a, basically it's just a hierarchy view shoved into a small fixed size window. If you have an entirely high, you know, higher overall synthize window on a larger monitor, you won't be able to use that entire height at this point because the hierarchy view is shoved again into this fixed sized window. And likewise, if you're using a small window, for synthize a smaller display, some of that hierarchy view may not actually show because it's again it's a fixed size. So there are some limitations when it's used as a secondary panel. You know, by default it's set up for the geometric hierarchy room, but you could also go to any of the other rooms and use the room manager and add a secondary panel, which is what it is for the geometric hierarchy room. So a bunch of different places to, to find it and put it to be able to use it. So a few basic little features. Here I'm using the middle mouse wheel to scroll it. And if you go and take something and start dragging it up to the top, you know, it'll auto scroll as well. I'm just going to cancel that with a right click. Similarly, you can use the middle mouse button to pan vertically and also horizontally as well. You know, in this particular case, that isn't so useful there, but over here in the side panel, that horizontal scroll can be useful when you've got a deeply nested hierarchy for the geometric hierarchy tracker and want to be able to see all those names. So those are just a few little fundamentals. So now let's take a look at some of these features. We've got some little show and hide controls. So little eyes there, I can turn off the visibility of the box over there. I can go change the color of any of these different items. I can double click something, click the name, and be able to change the name. And finally for trackers and for geometric hierarchy objects that are trackers also, there's a lock for them also. So you can either lock or unlock these different objects so that uh, when they're locked, you prevent yourself from inadvertently making an unwanted change. So those are a couple little basic features there. 
Now, as, as you've seen, when something is selected, you know, you get this little light blue, violet, whatever, uh, background. And you'll notice also there's this other maroon background that shows what the active tracker host is. And you also get, if you select an object, it'll change, it'll select the object, and it also changes the uh, tracker host. Now, the, the reason behind tracking all of that and adjusting the active tracker host is that when you have a tracker selected, its owning object has to be the active tracker host. The only trackers that can be selected are ones that are on the active tracker host. So one of the features is that if you go and select something just by clicking on it, the active tracker host may be adjusted to match what you've just done. So you can select anything and of course you can also shift select to be able to select a, a bunch of trackers in a row or a bunch of meshes in a row. You can also control click to unselect or you know reselect. So that's a control to toggle feature as well. So again pretty basic. Now we can also go and change the ownership of different objects. So if I take my tracker here, I can just drag it up to camera 01. And you'll notice when I get there, it's a valid drop target. So it changes to that green color. So I can just move it. And now it's owned by that camera 01. And if I've got a, uh, a tracker that I want to move around there, I just, I just moved it. If I hold down the control key, now you can't hit the control key to start with or that'll toggle the selection, but I'm going to hold the control key when I get there and that's going to say that I want to clone the tracker. So now I have two copies of it, which can sometimes be helpful with some of the geometric hierarchy stuff. Now back to some things with meshes. If I drag a mesh to the left, then I can orphan it, make it so that it has no parent at all. So you can move the meshes around. Similarly, I can just move it to the end. Okay, now let's look in the viewport on that and consider what's happening in the viewport. Now, that box, well, here, we'll, we'll, it's the sphere here that we'll play with. Here's the sphere, it's, it's parented to object two. If I move that object around, you know, the sphere moves with it. Now, if I change the parenting of that sphere to the other object, there's another object sitting out here. Now the sphere is parented to this other object. So again, I move it and it moves with it. But you notice that the position of the sphere didn't change. So the general rule is that when you change the parenting of something, the positions are all adjusted so that the thing doesn't actually move in the 3D environment. But if we want to, that was a right click on the undo, by the way. If we do want to have it move, essentially, and, and preserve the relative orientation, we can do that. I'm just going to take sphere 01. I'm going to start dragging it to that object. And I'm going to hold down shift. And the shift is going to say, hey, just, just maintain the relative location, not the absolute location. So now. When I let go, it shows up there parented sitting on top of that object as as well. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the different things you can do. Oh, one thing, one last point on that, you know, that that 
thing that I just showed you with the shift to preserve the relative position. That works for trackers also as far as their seed positions is concerned. Their 3D seed position, the lock coordinates on the coordinates panel. These coordinates up here for a tracker will be adjusted automatically as it gets reparented also. So it, it should be pretty straightforward in general. Hopefully you'll find it uh, very useful as I have. So thanks for watching.